We're going to do this like I did in my class. We'll do kind of magic. So who wants to be a volunteer? Okay, pick an atom, but don't tell me what it is. It has to be neon or smaller. Okay? You got that in your mind? Watch how we're going to do this, okay? She just picked an atom. I'm going to draw the MO diagram without knowing what it is. Okay? This is how easy it is because the diagram is the same every single time. Okay, all she has to tell me is it oxygen or larger, is it nitrogen or smaller? That's all I have to know. Okay, so I know it's going to be nitrogen or smaller. So the picture must look as follows. Again, I don't know what it is. Is that okay? Alright, so you put energy here. Yeah, you honestly don't need to know what it is until the very end. Okay, and I'm just going to call it molecule A. So this A2, you're going to put each atom on the outermost parts of it. So the molecules in the middle, the atoms are on the outside. Then what you're going to do is put all the atomic orbitals in. So now, I'm going to have a 1s orbital, a 2s, and a 2p. Three lines for the 2p because there's two, three 2p orbitals. Some people draw these as boxes. It doesn't matter if you want to draw it as a box or a line, whatever. And then on the other side, do the same thing. So there's a 2P, there's a 2S, and there's a 1S. Okay? It's always going to be like that because that's how the electrons fill. It goes 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, and then it goes to 3S2, but we're not going to go into the third orbit uh, for this class. Okay, now I'm going to draw, I'm going to start at the bottom and draw everything in. So for the 1s orbitals, there's a bonding molecular orbital at low energy and an antibonding at high energy. It's always going to look like this. The one at the bottom, see how there's one line here? One line right here where my pen is. That means it's called a sigma. Okay, I'm not giving you concepts right now, I'm just telling you how to do it because it's too late. Okay, sigma, and then the orbital name goes right here, 1s. The one on the top is also called the same, sigma 1s, but you put a little star because it's the higher one, the anti-bonding level, the one at higher energy, uh, at top has a little star after it. Okay, next for the 2s, same thing, the 2s looks exactly like the 1s, except it's called 2s, that's the only difference. The orbitals are bigger because it's 2s or higher energy. Okay, so this one line, see one line in the middle? Thus it's called a sigma. And it's sigma 2s because there's a 2s right here. And this one up here is sigma 2s star. That's it. I still remember, I do not know what the molecule is. This is like magic. Okay? I do not know what the molecule is still. She told me though it's nitrogen or smaller. Okay, so that, now here's where the key part goes. That's, this is why I asked this question. I need to draw this as follows. 2, 1, 2, 1. Uh, let me, while you're drawing that, I'll show you. This is in your text as well. Uh, if you want more details, you can ask me afterwards. It has to do with the size of the atom and how the orbitals overlap, how well they can overlap because of the size of the atom. But there's something in your text you need to know. Uh, here's just the schematic of it. So I'm going to pull this away for a minute. If it's nitrogen or smaller, see how the, the two P's fill, two, one, two, one? If it's bigger than nitrogen, so oxygen or larger, it goes one, two, two, one. Okay, that you've got to remember all by yourself. Okay, this is in your text, so take a look at it if you're not familiar with this. Now I'm going to go back to our picture, okay? We're doing the higher picture here, the, the one that's for nitrogen and smaller. Okay, so I did two, one, two, one, connect the dots. Now some people don't draw the part on the outside, that's up to you. I always draw it. I always draw these atomic orbitals, some people don't. Your book sometimes doesn't. Now name these. See how there's two lines? Pi. Remember two lines is pi, one line is sigma, you're pretty good. Pi, 2p, because you're the 2p orbital. Next, you got the sigma, because there's one line. Sigma. 2p. Then we've got the pi, 2p, what? Star, the antibonding, 
and the sigma, 2p star. Good. Again, I still don't know what the molecule is. You don't have to know. You can do all this without knowing the molecule. Okay. Now, here comes the key part. Uh, I've done everything I can now. Now I'm going to go to the molecule, so please reveal your answer. Okay. Is that what we did in class? Okay. All right. Well, my class here did something like this. So she wants to do boron. I should have picked B. Boron 2. Okay. And then also she had a charge in mind. What was your charge? 2 minus? 3. Okay. <laughs> this is getting into chemical ridiculousness. Uh, is it okay if I just do 2 minus? I'll, I'll, I'll show you what would happen with 3 minus. It's just not practical. Okay, 2 minus. Okay. You just, usually things don't have like a 3 plus or a 3 minus charge when you're talking about these diatomics. Okay, now, here's what you do. Since it's boron 2 minus, just for accounting, I'm going to make both of these B minus. Because when both the minuses come together, there's two minus. One from each side. Okay. So that means its electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p what? Okay, 2p3, is that right? Oh, 2p2. 2p2, okay, is that right? I don't know, I'm just writing it down. I can hardly see this thing with this angle. Uh, yeah, a B minus, that's just like carbon. Is that okay? The question is, is it okay to put like B2 minus and B neutral or something like that? I encourage you to split it evenly. It usually will cause you less problems later. Yeah. Okay, now let's fill it in. Now you got this electron configuration, 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, on both sides. 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Oops, kind of smudged this one, sorry. Okay, now let's fill it in. The most important is to do the middle. You do one section at a time, one section at a time. Let's do the 1s only first. There are a total of four electrons. One, two, three, four. So you fill those in in the middle. One, one, if you don't know how to do this, watch my pen. One, two, three, four. There's those four. Oh yeah. <laughs> Boss like their tongue or something. Okay. Next one. Four electrons. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now for the next one. This one also happens to have four, just magically. Okay, one, two on each side, so that's whole four. So watch if you don't know how to do this. One, two, three, four. Okay, if it was B three minus that next one, go right there. Okay, so you just fill up. Now, the, usually what we ask you is a couple questions. First question, is this para or diamagnetic? Diamagnetic? Why? Everything in the middle is paired. So it's diamagnetic. Everything in the middle is paired. If there was one electron unpaired, it's called paramagnetic. If there's one or more unpaired, it's called paramagnetic. Yeah, if it was B3, B2, 3 minus, it would be paramagnetic. Okay, the next thing is the bond order. Here's how I do the bond order. You pick your highest orbital that has electrons, that's the 2p. Pick your highest orbital that has electrons. You count the electrons without a star and subtract them from the ones that do have a star. So there's two, four in orbitals that have no star, bonding orbitals. So it's four minus number of electrons in antibonding orbitals or ones with stars. And you see there's zero up here, zero. Divided by two. I was divided by two, and so this will be two. What kind of bond is that? Double bond. So double bond. Two means double. And that's it. Okay, so there's your MO. 
Let's stop it and restart it for the sequence parts. <laughs>